Hi everyone and welcome back to a new comparison video by Mio Lessons. Today I'm here with two E-mount lenses and more precisely two wide-angle primes, the Batis 18mm and the Loxia 21mm. You may have watched my Batis 18mm review already here on YouTube, if not you will find the link in the cards at the top right hand corner. When the Loxia 21mm was released last year, a lot of people started to ask for a comparison between the Loxia 21 and the Batiste 25mm. Now that the 18mm is out, the most obvious comparison becomes 18 versus 21mm. The first relevant difference between these two lenses is the focusing system. The Batiste 18mm is an autofocus lens, while the Loxia 21 is a manual focus lens. The Batiste 18mm focuses fast in both single and continuous autofocus even when shooting very close to a subject. The performance is also good for video. The Loxia 21mm has a distance and hyperfocal scale. You can also take advantage of the magnification in the viewfinder or LCD screen of the camera to double check your focus point. The focus ring is mechanical and as such it is really nice and precise to use. Personally this autofocus manual focus difference wouldn't affect my decision too much. Because they're both two wide-angle lenses, I find it easy to manual focus with the locks in most situations, especially when talking about architecture or landscape where you don't need to rush to take your shot. However, if you plan to use the lens for some events, action or other situations where the autofocus is convenient, then the Batiste might be a better choice. The second relevant difference is the size. I've always praised the Loxia lenses because they match the E-mount and the compact size of the camera just perfectly. The difference in weight, however, is less relevant and actually the Batiste 18mm is slightly lighter. They both have a metal build and the Loxia comes with a metal hood in comparison to the plastic hood of the Batiste. The 18mm is also weather sealed against dust and moisture, while the Loxia features blue rubber that protects the mount but the lens itself is not weather sealed. The Batiste 18mm has an OLED screen that shows you your focus distance and depth of field. The focus ring is a fly-by-wire type so you won't get the same precision as the mechanical ring of the Loxia. You also need to turn it more to change the same focus distance in comparison to the 21mm. Interestingly, the Loxia has more breathing when changing focus point than the Batiste. The Loxia 21 has an aperture ring that moves in one-third steps. It is precise to use, is not too loose and can also be de-clicked for video work by turning a dedicated screw on the rear. One annoying thing about the Loxia is that you don't have a lot of room on the barrel to unmount the lens because the two rings occupy almost the entire surface. So while unmounting the lens you are also turning the rings or even the hood accidentally. With the Batiste you have more grip on the lens barrel. The Loxia 21mm is one of my absolute favorite full-frame E-mount lenses and in that special list I would probably add the 55mm 1.8 and probably the 90mm macro as well. So I was really curious to see how this lens would perform side by side with the new Batis. Concerning sharpness at f2.8, the Batis lens does better. Not a huge difference, but it's there. This is valid for both the center and the corners of the frame. From f4 the performance is very similar while from 5.6 it is the Loxia that takes the lead. Once again there isn't a lot of difference but this remains the case up to the smaller apertures where the Loxia lens suffers less from diffraction at f16. The Batis can focus as close as 30cm with autofocus and 25cm with manual focus which is the same as the Loxia lens. Because the focal length is longer, the Loxia 21 of course has better magnification. 
The bokeh is very similar and you will only get a relevant shallow depth of field by focusing close to an element. Barrel distortion is well contained on both lenses. Flare resistance is also excellent. The Loxia 21 has a more distinctive star flare and we can notice some tiny ghost flares on both lenses in direct sunlight. Vignetting and chromatic aberration are not an issue. For astrophotography, the 18mm suffers less from chromatic aberration. The Loxia doesn't look bad at all, but when comparing the corners of the same scene, the Batiste does have a little advantage. Perhaps the most important question if you are hesitating between these two lenses is, which field of view is best for your type of shooting? 3mm in the wide angle world is a relevant difference, so let's analyze some case studies. For landscapes, it is less of an issue if we are talking about wide views of a scene, but let's look at this other example where I try to capture the entire waterfall. With the Batiste 18mm, I managed to include the very top and the stream of water passing just in front of me. With the Loxia 21mm, however, to keep the top in my frame, I had to sacrifice some of the foreground. I could have walked further away from the waterfall and tried to capture a vaster scene with the Loxia lens, but then a few elements would have interfered, and at that point the best solution would have been to look for a different point of view. In this second example on the street, I managed to capture the entire block in front of me, while with the Loxia I prioritized the bigger house. Moving indoors, the comparison becomes even more interesting. This is a beautiful large hall inside Kirk Castle in Wales, and with the 18mm I could really capture the immensity of the room. We see lots of details outside the two main columns that suggest the size of the room. With the Loxia, the field of view is smaller, and somehow you don't get the same sense of vastness as with the 18mm. This is for me the most important difference between these two lenses. Despite being a 21mm lens, the Loxia may not be wide enough in some situation and finding a different shooting point can be trickier in small spaces. I also want to add that having a narrow field of view is not necessarily a negative thing. I shot with the Loxia lens in London and at times I did find the angle of view somehow limiting, but then it was also a matter of coming up with the best composition using the gear I had with me, and in the end I was very pleased with my images. The price is approximately the same for both at around $1,500, so that doesn't really help with our decision. If we put aside the main differences like autofocus versus manual focus or the small differences like sharpness and optical quality, I think that the real deciding factor is the field of view. It is a tough choice, but my advice would be the following. Choose the Loxia lens for landscapes and streetscapes, and choose the Batiste for astrophotography and indoor-outdoor architecture. So, as usual, thank you for watching, don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have any questions, please like the video, subscribe, and see you soon. Bye-bye!